and thank you, Senator Richmond. The next is Senator John Dolan. You have four minutes, and it's the same minister who will be responding. Senator Dolan. Cahirlock, Minister. Delighted to join with Cahirlock in, in, in welcoming the, the Minister to the House, and I'm particularly uh, pleased that for the first time we have a Minister at the Cabinet table uh, overseeing and looking at the whole area of disability inclusion, which is a whole of government issue. Um, it is a unique rule, and Minister, in a sense, you're, you're uh, in some ways become the, the conscience of uh, the Cabinet in relation to this issue to ensure effective implementation of the UNCRPD as the linchpin. Ireland signed the Convention in March 2007. That's just almost 10 years ago. We have now, a, uh, uh, there's been 10 years therefore to prepare for ratification, to bring in uh, the, the legislative measures and otherwise to be ready. At the recent European Disability Forum conference, um, you said, and this has been said over and over, that Ireland's approach always is not to ratify international treaties until it's ready to implement them. My simple response and logical response, therefore, was once it's ratified, everything, all the buttons have to be green. Everything has to move. The legislation, the piece of legislation that still needs to be put in place have to be ready. And the other practical measures uh, in relation to the upcoming uh, budget and resourcing for people also need to be uh, put in place. Today I present you with the opportunity to confirm three things. Firstly, that work is underway across departments and public services to ensure uh, implementation. Secondly, that ratification will take place before the end of 2016, this year. And thirdly, that preparation for Budget 17 includes resourcing uh, to progress implementation. I've mentioned the roadmap already in parallel on the legislative side of it that's being published. In parallel with that, and this is the piece about the budget, um, the practical things must now uh, be put in place in relation to our upcoming budget. There's a raft of things in terms of health, housing, personal assistance, cost of disability, transport, and many more. I just want to say a word in relation to the way that people with disabilities can characterise the years that have passed, the recession years. And there's two, 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 ways, uh, two key ways. Number one, there have been repeated, there were repeated commitments that their services and supports would be protected and prioritised. We heard those over and over. Secondly, a gross understatement or under-acknowledgement, as time went on, of the depth and scope of the cuts that still continue to pull down people with disabilities and their families in terms of participation in this country. In other words, at this stage, if a credible start is not made, people with disabilities can well draw the conclusion that they have been, they have been hoodwinked over the past decade. That the Oireachtas, indeed, has, has not kept faith with them. The UNCRPD is simply a methodology to give effect to the emancipation of 600,000 people. In conclusion, I have no doubt whatsoever that Ireland can implement the Convention well over, over the time ahead. Resolve, ambition, and confidence to do so. It will be the right and proper thing for people with disabilities and equally for the economic, the moral and the social development of our country. Thank you, Minister. Uh, first of all, I want to th thank Senator John Dolan for his best wishes and I and, and absolutely like to congratulate himself on being elected to the Shannon. Uh, and I know John for many, many years and I know from the Disability Federation of Ireland, the magnificent work that he's done, that the people with disabilities have, have a voice in the Shannon as well. I think that's very, very important, and just to wish him well in the future. So I also want to thank Senator Dolan for raising this very, very important topic, and it is a very, very topic, important topic for me. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to address the issue of Ireland's ratification of the Convention of the UNCRPD, 
and provide an update on my work underway to meet our ratification targets. The roadmap to ratification published by the previous government last October detailed all the remaining legislative barriers to ratification and the work that would be undertaken to overcome them. It also set out a clear time frame and I can confirm that we are on track to achieve our target of ratification of both the Convention and its op optional protocol by the end of this year. And this is something that I'm working very, very hard to achieve. Much has been achieved already on overcoming the obstacles to ratification outlined in the roadmap with the enactment of the Assist uh, Assisted Decision Making Capacity Act 2015 and the amendments to the Mental Health Act 2001 which removed the authority to administer electroconvulsive therapy or medicine after a three-month period to an involuntary patient with capacity who is unwilling to consent to the treatment. The Criminal Law Sexual Offences Bill 2015 was passed by the Shannad on the 26th of January this year. When enacted, the bill will reform Section 5 of the Criminal Law Sec Sexual Offences Act 1993 to facilitate the full participation in family life of persons with intellectual disabilities and the full expression of their human rights. Achieving the necessary balance between those rights and ensuring appropriate protection is absolutely crucial. Work is also underway to drawing up the Equality Disability Miscellaneous Provisions Bill to progress the outstanding miscellaneous legis legislative amendments necessary to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to proceed with ratification. The bill will also address issues such as the Convention's requirement in relation to reasonable accommodation and deprivation of liberty, as, as well as removing archaic references in existing legislation relating to mental health. We have recently presented the general scheme of the bill to the Oireachtas for pre-legislative scrutiny. To address Senator John Dolan's other points about resources for implementation, let me be clear, Senator Dolan, we do need more resources for disability. And we, the disability services have taken a hit over the last seven or eight years. And can I say, I and this government will deliver on that and we will do our best. My priorities are clear. Underlying this government's commitment to the disability sector, I recently announced last week the provision of an additional 31 million for disability services in 2016. And this includes 3 million new, new for new initiatives, including additional provision for services to meet the need of school leavers with disabilities and the anticipated cost of a number of emergency residential, uh, residential placements arising this year. And these are the issues that I found when I took over in office. These were priority issues that had to be dealt with immediately. However, the ratification of the Convention is a totally separate issue which is not contingent on resources and does not require additional funding. When we ratify the Convention by the end of this year, we will be making a solemn commitment to the international community that our body of domestic legislation is fully in line with the Convention and fully meets the standards required of the Convention. Issues around the allocation of resources will always be subject to debate and are a matter of the, for the individual departments involved. <coughs> Service standards and funding are subject to the Convention described as progressive realisation and are subject to budgetary decisions of the government of the day. And again, that's my job, to push for those uh, budgetary decisions and push for those services. The programme for government sets out a range of commitments to improve the lives of people with disabilities. The government supports, and I say this again, and I will be watching the 2017 estimates, and I'm already starting on them. The government supports an increase in disability benefit an increase in disability allowance, the carers benefit and allowance, and the blind person's pension. And I am committed to implementing these policies. Legislation is being drafted to in introduce a new mobility scheme. And this is something that I'm going to have in the next couple of weeks. And the government supports further increases in the housing adaptation grants. Work will continue on moving, on moving people with disabilities, living in congregated settings, to live independently. And this morning I'd like to tell my colleagues in Shannon that I want to announce 20 million extra new money in relation to funding, uh, of taking people out of congregated settings, taking them out of institutions. 
and I will supply later on the list of institutions who will benefit from this 20 million. And this 20 million will, take, will enable people with an, uh, an intellectual and physical disability living in institutions to move to appropriate accommodation. In other words, uh, down, uh, take them out of institutions, put them in smaller community homes of maximum of four people with support, staff and services. And that 20 million is going to be spent over the next couple of weeks. So finally, I want to thank Senator Dolan for raising this issue. And of course, I'd also like to change the mindset. When we're talking about people with disabilities, we're talking about our families, our brothers, our daughters, our brothers and sisters, our neighbours. And we're talking about citizens of this state and we're talking about protecting their rights. So I am determined that this UN Convention will be ratified uh, by, by Christmas. Thank you very much. A, a, ver a very fulsome response, Senator Dolan. Do you wish to make a comment briefly? Um, the, the, clearly, I'm relieved and delighted, not just that work is, com is, is underway in across departments, in, relation, uh, in justice in particular and other departments in terms of the legal aspects and that ratification will take place by the end of this year. Um, the, the response has also mentioned some extra funding in related to congregated settings that, that is important and should be noted. Uh, what I have not heard is the third question I asked, that the assurances that the, the, there will be resourcing available in the coming budget to start next year. The reply is shy in terms of talking about the coming year. I think it is absolutely critical that once we get to this hurdle of ratifying that there isn't another stop and now we have to start thinking about resourcing. That has to be, that has to be uh, done now. I don't accept the point that there are no uh, implications for resourcing in relation to ratification. A huge job has to be done to improve the ordinary lives of people with disabilities. Getting them out of institutions is one thing, making sure the community is fit for them to live uh, uh, good lives where they can participate is another matter. Thank you, Cahir. Yeah. We're going well, Lord Limit Minister, you want to make a brief response? Yeah, just, to just to say, I mean, I take up uh, John's point, uh, Senator Dolan's point in relation to the 10 years waiting, and that's something as soon as I, I uh, during the talks of the Programme for Government, that's something that I inserted into the Programme for Government, and we have to act on that. And 10 years hanging around on this issue is not acceptable. So we, but let's try and do it now. On the issue of uh, the assurances in the common budget, yes. Well, I, I'm giving you assurances here this morning that we have to have done it, we have to have the resources to fund the new services, but also my position is we have to have the resources to catch up on the damage that was done over the last nine or ten years, and, that's, and I accept that point and, I, and I, I'm given a commitment. I've sat down already with my staff already, and I've been over the next two or three weeks, and I will be demanding and looking for extra resources to implement a lot of the issues that Senator Dolan raised. So the answer to your question is yes, I'm not going to make any big false promises in here, but I'll tell you this much, I give a strong commitment that I'll do my best to ensure and focus on the service, uh, all service for people with disability. But also, I'd like to say to my colleagues here as well, it's not just Minister McGrath and myself that, I, that he's the person dealing with disabilities. I want to broaden out this debate as well. Every single minister in the Cabinet should have a role to deal with the issue of and uh, support people, the rights of people with disabilities and services. And for example, I've set myself a target. The target is, of, uh, in relation to employment, is 3% target. I'm trying to set myself over the next uh, three years a target of 6% to try and get people with disabilities. There are tens of uh, thousands of Hundred, uh, many, many young people out there with a physical, particularly with intellectual disability. I met a group of them yesterday on the Irish Wheelchair Association. I met another group three weeks ago on the CRC. Brilliant, talented young people with physical disabilities and they're looking for a job. And I'm talking about a real job. So what I'm saying to every single minister in the cabinet, it's not just Finney McGrath dealing with disabilities. He deals with this stuff. We all have a responsibility. And I to say to my senator colleagues as well, I'd appreciate support and that vision. And we need to change that mindset in Irish society as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister. Next one is...